Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're going to have a bit of a mini zip drive extravaganza. That's right. There's several things that I want to look at with you regarding zip drives today. First, we're going to have a look at hardware. Then, some installation tips. After that, I'm going to show you some software applications. And then, we're going to do a bit of a right performance test. So, I suggest you settle in and get comfy, and let's get right to it. As you can see on the table here, we have a lot of hardware to look at, so let's get started looking at things piece by piece. Here we have a nice Zip 100 Plus drive, and first on the top, you'll see we have a nice clear area where we can look in and see what sort of disk we have in there. Looking at the front of the drive, you'll see that we have a place to put the disk in, as well as a power button and eject button. On the Zip 100 Plus drive, it serves as both. On a standard Zip Parallel drive, and maybe a SCSI, I don't think you can ever power it off. So in any event, you do have that soft power off button, and also two indicator lights, one for power and one for disk access, which we'll see here in a little bit in action. Also, on this side of the drive, you'll notice that there are four rubber feet and a power connector in the middle, and they were very thoughtful in that you can actually route the power cable out to the back and then set the drive on its end like so. Looking at the bottom of the drive, we see this nice sticker as well as four feet as well, so that the drive can easily be set on a table laying flat just like this. And here we have the back of the drive, and on this side is where the connector cable plugs in. In this case, this does say Auto Detect, since it is a ZIP100 Plus drive. In the center here, we have a selector to choose the SCSI ID, and on the far right here, we have a connector for connecting a pass-through SCSI device or printer. Here we have the Atapi drive and we can turn it around and see what it looks like from the front. There you can see a slot where you put the disk in, as well as the power light and also the eject button all in one. As we turn it around, we can see the other sides are fairly unassuming, but we can look at this sticker on the top. Looking at the sticker on the top, we can see various details about the drive, as well as jumper settings. Flipping to the back here, we have the connector for IDE and those jumpers as well as the power connector as well. So that's pretty much a tour of the Atapi Zip Drive. Here we have a Zip Zoom SCSI Accelerator card. And really, it's a fairly unassuming ISA SCSI card. Doesn't even really have a BIOS to speak of, as far as I know. Here it is. You can see we have a couple of jumper settings for setting different IRQs and ports. We have the main chip there in the center. And we can see this is an AVA 1502E. And we've got our 25 pin connector there as well. And that's pretty much it. It is an ISA card, as you see. I also do have the box that this came in, which is kind of interesting, especially as we flip it around. And then as we flip it to the back, we can see all the different languages and the concept that this is the performance you need at an affordable price. I guess that's debatable. Quite frankly, if it were me back in the day, rather than buying this, I would probably buy a higher quality SCSI card. But for a zip drive, it gets the job done. Next, we have the first of two power adapters, and the earlier drives came with this big wall wart that you see. And indeed it is 120 volts in my case, since I'm in the US, output of five volts with one amp of power, and it is a sight to behold. Fortunately, later drives came with this little slim connector, which is much nicer. And similarly, it is also 5 volts and 1 amp. So they got the job done in a much slimmer package, if I do say so myself. I think the original parallel zip drive that I bought back in the day had a wall wart, but when I got a Zip Plus, it had this nice, sleek power connector. And here we have the star of the show, a Zip Disk. And you can see it has a nice label on it and a nice grip here so that you can pull the disc out of the drive and push it into the drive. 
as well as a slot cover to keep all that nice magnetic data safe. As we flip over to the other side, we can see an area for gripping the disc and spinning it, as well as a indicator of what type of disc this is. So there you have it, a zip disc. Here we have a nice signature blue connector cable for the external drive. And we can see if we look at this end, it says auto detect. And not only does it say auto detect, but it is a female style connector. And that's for plugging into the drive. On the other end, we have this nice iOmega symbol and we have the male connector side so that we can hook into the parallel port or 25 pin SCSI port of a computer. We also have this nice yellow label that says use only this cable with your Zip Plus drive. Do not use any cable converters or gender changers, namely because this is a special auto detect cable and I would only imagine that not having it could cause you some trouble. So as you can see, that's the hardware collection. Now I'm going to play just a few seconds of video so that you can see the drives in action, doing an eject, seeing the lights lit up, and all of that good stuff. For installation, we'll start with the DOS installer using DOS Stuff Installer. We'll just do an express installation, which will install files and modify config sys and auto exec bat. And from there, prompt us to reboot, which we will not do because there's other changes I want to make to config sys. And principally, we'll make three changes. First, we're going to add the ASPI ATAP driver so that the ATAPI drive can be recognized. So that'll be the first thing we do, at least try to do. And after I finished with that, I went ahead and removed the next line, which is ASPI PPM1, since that's for parallel port, and ASPI PPM2 is sufficient. We can also change Nibble to ECP2 to take advantage of that ECP parallel port. So those are the three changes we'll make. And from there, reboot, and you'll see drivers loading for the SCSI card itself, the PC1600, and then you will see the detection program trying to load all three drives. You'll notice it says they are SCSI, that's just because we're using the ASPI manager, and we now have drivers loaded for all three different types of drives. Now another option we have, if we don't want to install drivers, is to use the guest program. And you can see me running that here. Now, one thing you'll notice about the guest program is only two drives got detected. And the explanation is quite simple, really. In MS-DOS, last drive defaults to drive E. And I didn't change it, hence why only two drives are detected. Moving on to Windows 3.1, we're going to look at the W31 stuff or Win stuff folder. And the first thing I'm going to do is launch the manual program, which shows you that this particular installation of tools is version 5.4. And that's what we want. I also have tools for version 5.51 or 5.5.1. We'll see it both ways. That's the version I don't want. But just to show you, if I go to install that version, you'll see that it does tell me the version number here in the top left corner of the screen, which will appear now. However, I don't want to install this version because it has a bug with ejecting a tappy zip disks. So now we can install version 5.4, but look, it tells you this is just the installation tools and doesn't tell you the version. That's why I showed you the manual concept so that you can see which version you truly have. Great. So this is also going to install some DOS drivers as well as Windows drivers. I'll go ahead and tidy things up a little bit. And just to show you the version we have, we'll go into Zip Tools and see that we indeed have version 5.0 of the Omega Tools, despite installing version 5.4, but that's fine. This is the good version. However, one thing that this does is actually put a launcher for guest.exe and autoexec.bat. So we need to go load that up and take it out because we're not using guest. I'm not sure why they did this. It is the wrong thing to do. I guess it's better to install the DOS tools using DOS stuff instead and then proceed to 3.1. And speaking of things that are bad to do, let's look at the parallel port accelerator. The concept here is this is supposed to detect changes that can be made to make your parallel port experience faster. And it gets things dead wrong. 
Let me go ahead and load up config sys after running the accelerator. And look, my file was set back to nibble. We changed this earlier. Why would it think that nibble is better than ECP? I don't know, but we fixed it and now we put it back. So there you have it. Let's dig a little deeper into zip tools. And what we'll do is look at information for each of the three drives, starting with the SCSI drive. And here you can see information about that drive, which is kind of cool. Lots of good details about its particular configuration. Moving on to look at the Atapi drive, we can see something similar. Although it does say on the second tab this is a SCSI drive, because once again it is using those ASPI drivers, but indeed it is an Atapi drive. We can also look at the parallel drive if I scroll down here a little bit, and you'll see similar information as well as to the other drives. Kind of cool to see all the different details and to see how Zip Tools registers and thinks about these particular drives. Next, we can look at the format option, and I guess we can go ahead and format a disk here. Why not? And you'll be very impressed to see how quickly it formats. I actually did not speed the video up here. And in about eight seconds or so, the disk formats. So I guess you can say that it defaults to a quick format. You could do a longer format if you wanted as well. So the format is complete. Next, let's look at the Find It application, which is a sort of cataloger. Kind of a primitive search, if you think about it. Kind of a precursor to like what we would see built into Windows 95 later. But basically, you can select the disk, click OK, It'll catalog the contents, and you can rinse and repeat. From there, you can search, and I'm just going to search for Oregon, as opposed to Oregon star dot or something. And when I search for Oregon star dot, you can see that it does find things. But when I searched for Oregon, you can see it did not. So that's kind of cool. I guess this could help you find things and see what disks things are on. Some degree of value. Next, we have the copy machine, and it says what it does, and it does what it says. And one thing I like about the copy machine is the animations that you'll get to see here in just a second. First of all, let me select a disk and then fumble because, you know, I forgot to put the disk in the drive. And then from there, we'll be all set to go. Yeah, try again, Chris. Why don't you actually put the disk in, dummy? Okay. So from there, <laughs> we've got things where they need to be. And look at that cool little animation where you see data flowing across, followed by that little champion guy at the end as well. Boy, did he look happy. Next, let's look at the eject program. And this loads on startup. And what I found about this is if you alt tab to this program, it'll actually eject the disk for you. That was something I discovered by accident. But you'll see that that program actually did have support for all three drives. Next, we'll look at the help. It's actually pretty cool and pretty comprehensive. You can see that we have a full set of help for the different tools and explains a little bit about what they do. Go ahead and pause the video if you want to read it. And we can also see that there's other items as well as in specifics for using the copy machine, as well as specifics for using the Find It program. Maybe I did it the wrong way, I don't know. But here you can see those if you want some information about that. And there's also information about using the disk watch, which I didn't demonstrate, but is basically a way to watch the disks. I never really understood it or used it back in the day, so we didn't cover it today. Now let's do a comparison test and I'm showing this to you at 4x speed. I'm copying about 10 megabytes worth of data, and it happens to be my Windows 3.1 directory. Let's see which drive will finish first, which will finish second, which will finish third, and I'm pretty sure we all know which will finish last. As we scroll through here, we can see that the Atapi drive finished first, followed by the SCSI, and I have a feeling it's going to be the Parallel ECP next, and then finally it's going to be the Parallel Nibble. So, is the parallel nibble drive as slow as you thought it was? You betcha, and we have the statistics to prove it. There it is. Now, let's take a minute and show just how much faster one is over the other. As a baseline, I've used the parallel nibble drive. And for this copy test, we can see that parallel ECP is 132% faster, and Atapi is 157% faster, and SCSI is 155%. I was fascinated by these results. I always knew that Parallel was bad, but what particularly impressed me was just how good Parallel ECP is. Now let's try copying a 23 megabyte DLL file, and I'll show you this in 8x speed. We can see the Atapi and SCSI drives pretty much finished at the same time, and the Parallel ECP is not too terribly far behind. Now, as we look at the comparison chart for these, it is interesting to see the difference. 
Look at that parallel as a baseline again. Look at the ECP parallel. It's about half the speed. This really surprised me. Okay, not quite half, but eh, what was it? 175% as opposed to 100. As we look at the Atapi and the SCSI, it really knocks the socks off of the others. So it's interesting to see that the larger files actually do take longer as compared to a bunch of smaller files when we're dealing with the different types of drives. Fascinating. Let's try a bootable zip disk. I've made a bootable DOS 622 disk. Now I'm in my BIOS and I'm changing it to boot from the zip drive first. Not all BIOSes have that, but this modern Pentium 233 does. Now, here we are booting from DOS 6.22. However, it appears to be hanging. Aw oh, shucks. Well, I went searching online and couldn't find any information about why a zip disk hangs, but I did find for LS120 drives that MS-DOS is not supported. Here we can see that MS-DOS and early versions of Windows 95 are not. Okay, no problem. So I put a Windows 98 boot disk into drive A and switch the BIOS back. And here we can see it's starting up. And once it gets all started up, what we can do is change into the iOmega directory and go ahead and run the guest program. And you see me doing that here. And we see that drive E is the Atapi drive. There's our Oregon Trail DLL I copied earlier. I'll go ahead and try to put a system on drive E, though it's best to change to a drive that actually has the system on it. So we can do that. And now if we reboot, we can see the Windows 98 startup. And if we do a DIR, we'll see that indeed, we are now running from our zip disk. How cool is that? All right, well, that's what I had for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. I had a blast making this video, though I will say that editing all of those different comparison tests in was a bit of a pain, but I do it for the love of the channel. Speaking of which, definitely subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more content on the way. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Also, ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when new content is available. Also, do me a favor. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, well, give it a thumbs down. Any engagement is good engagement, and I'll take it. As always, it's been great having you along today. I'm glad you've joined me for the journey. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, but until then, bye for now.